Howdy folks, John here from rchelicopterfun.com. Today we're gonna to be testing out and reviewing one of these super capacitor rescue save modules that uh, are supposed to keep powering your onboard electronics, meaning your receiver, your servos, and if you have a flight controller or a fly barless system for maybe up to a minute or so, so you can safely land the uh, helicopter or airplane if your uh, you know your back fails your main flight battery craps out i've always been skeptical of these things so i want to thank banggood for sending it uh, to me so we can all have a look at it together and hopefully by the time we test it out and review it you can decide if it's something that is worthwhile for your application and i do believe these are very much application dependent now i should mention that uh, this doesn't power the main motor or anything on your aircraft. This is just to power the electronics. So you could do an auto rotation or glide the uh, airplane in. At least that's the theory. And again, is this a uh, solution looking for a problem or does it actually work? Here's the little unit itself. I'll go over size and weight specifications in just a bit. Just wanted to show you what it's comprised of. There's a circuit board on top but the main bulk and size of the component itself are the three super caps. These appear to all be the same values. Super caps have very low voltage ratings. Uh, so this is maximum 2.7 volts and huge capacitance, so 50 farads. So I presume what they've done is hook these in series. So we would uh, add the voltages, uh, 2.7 times three, 8.1 volts but the capacitance is lowered. It's basically 50 divided by three, so 16.666. Uh, they've just rounded it up to 16.7. It's got a two conductor wire coming out of it with a standard servo plug on the end, and you would just plug this into any spare or unused channel on your receiver or fly barless flight controller unit, and you're just powering up the power bus. So if the uh, main power into your system was to fail or your BEC failed, this would then be providing a power for a short period of time, giving you time to uh, glide in or auto-rotate. Specs real quick, do size here. We're looking at, what do we got here? Let's call it 56 by, let's go to the highest part on the board here, about 48 by almost 19. And weight-wise, turn our little scale on here. We're looking at 1.4 ounces or about 42 grams. Now let's hook it up. Right, just go over the setup here so you can understand what's going on. Just have my little receiver here. I've got four servos plugged into it to the throttle aileron elevator rudder channel. So as we stir the radio sticks, we can get the servos moving and create maximum draw. It's being powered through a 2S Lifey RX battery pack and I've got the battery pack hooked to the receiver through the switch so we can turn the power off once the uh, cap pack is plugged in to see how long it will last. I've just got a servo extension plugged into a spare channel here, the AUX4 channel, and that's what we will plug the uh, cap pack into. And then I've also got my multimeter out and it's plugged into a spare channel as well, AUX1 to monitor the voltage. So we can see how the voltage is dropping or decaying as this thing is powering it. So let's turn the radio on and we will turn on the unit without this plugged in. So you can see what the voltage is. It's roughly 6.5 volts. That's what the uh, RX battery is supplying. And as we stir the radio sticks, we can see the servo is moving and the voltage drops down as it's as we're drawing current through it but staying above six volts so we will now plug the, this cap pack in oh well, let's see what happens when we power this up okay so a little red led starts flashing and that's indicating it's getting power and then it's hard to see but there's a what, 20%, 60% and full. So as this thing is charging up, these little green LEDs will in sequence light up, I presume. Now I'm not gonna edit this for time so we can see how long it's gonna take to charge. So it's not like a regular electrolytic capacitor that 
you know, those things charge up instantaneously, basically. This thing is taking a while to uh, charge those super caps up. So there's the second LED now has lit. You can see the voltage on the meter has dropped a little bit as this thing's charging up because it's obviously drawing some current as it's charging. And there, it's fully charged now. All three LEDs are lit and it's ready to rock. And you can see the voltage has recovered a bit. So this would presumably be normal flying sequence now. You know, that's what's neat about this. You don't have to babysit it or anything. It's basically plug and play. Once it's hooked up, you just forget it. So we're flying along. You know, everyone's happy. And for some reason, our Beck fails. So we're going to kill the power here. And again, I'm not going to edit anything for time. I'm going to have to try to do this all in frame. So, killing the power. Watch the voltage meter as well. So, power is now off and that red LED is flashing, saying that it's not getting power. As you see, the power or the voltage is decaying slightly, but it's slow. This thing's easily supplying the voltage needed to run the electronics. We're not running any servos though. There's no load placed on them. You know, on a helicopter, either, even when the servos aren't moving, there's going to be load on the rotor disc or even an airplane. So let's start moving the sticks around here. And we can see the voltage is decaying quite quick. We're down to two LEDs. One LED. Voltage is down to almost 5 volts now. The servos are slowing right down. Getting very slow. And depending on your receiver, your radio system, will depend when the uh, RX dies. I think JRs are around 3.3 volts, 3.4, just like Spectrum. Oh, very slow. There, as soon as it hit, that's dead. So what was that? Maybe 30 seconds? Enough to get you down though. No, no doubt about that, assuming you're close in and you're not super high in the air. But if you're drawing lots of current through it, this thing isn't gonna last long. Power it back up. Just get these things charging back up. So like I said, very much application dependent. Big helicopter with you know digital uh, cordless or brushless servos, standard size servos, going to be drawing a lot of current. And yeah, you'd get maybe 20 seconds to get your bird down if your back crapped out. The other obvious question is how do you know if it failed? Because this thing is doing a really good job of powering everything if your main input voltage was to uh, disappear. So how do you know? So basically, I think the only way this would function properly is if you've got a low level voltage alarm, either telemetry or on board your aircraft. And as soon as that power goes below or voltage goes below uh, six volts, that alarm rings telling you that, oh, the power's gone. We're running off of our little super cap rescue module here and we got to get down ASAP. So it does have its functionality. Uh, I don't know how useful it is as far as time goes. Totally application dependent. If you've got high draw servos, it's going to drain down a lot quicker than it would with smaller micro servos. But of course, the size of this thing, uh, it's going to be in a larger helicopter or airplane. You're not going to be sticking this on little micro, uh, a little micro heli, uh, even a 450 size heli, you know, that's pushing the weight and size on something like that. For anyone who knows, all my larger aircraft, you know, 550 and up helicopters and bigger airplanes, I power them all with RX batteries. I don't run BECs. I don't trust uh, the ESC powering. It's just my method. Not saying there's anything wrong with it, but I have always powered bigger aircraft with their own dedicated battery. And for me, something like this on those 
um, redundant. I've really never had a problem with RX batteries. That's why I use them. They're robust. As long as they're charged up, I've never had an issue. But if you fly with Bex only, uh, these are, they work. I'm surprised. It, uh, it certainly powered it, but if you've got load on your servos and you're moving them around, which on a helicopter you always are, the fly barless unit is moving them around to stabilize the heli, this thing is gonna decay pretty quick. Is something like this just introducing another level of complexity and another potential failure point into your power system? That's my main concern with stuff like this. And again, it's why I run dedicated RX batteries. Robust, foolproof, no BS. Hopefully that gives you an idea on this thing. Again, I will have a link below in the description to it if you want to check it out on Banggood's site. And I want to thank those guys again for sending it to me so we can all have a look at it. And please, uh, comments below. What do you think this would be best suited for? Do you think it's good for a big helicopter, a bigger airplane, or just moderately sized stuff? And how do you think would be the best way to determine when it is actually functioning and you have to get down quick? Comments below. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.